Welcome back to Through the Ringer. I'm your host, Tate Frazier. We got a very fun show ahead today. We got Big Waz joining us uh, from Group Chat. But first and foremost, we got to get to Cousin Sal. Sal, good to see you, man. Long time no Great see. Great to see you. I think you're you're setting expectations too high <laughs> with a very fun show, yeah. especially since I'm on for the first half of it. So, But we'll do our best. Look, that's the best part of the show. It's uh, the oh, time when I get nice. to play my favorite game, which we're going to get to a little bit here. But first and foremost, we got to get to first Tate. So I say to you, Sal, losing to the Bills this weekend is saving us from a very dumb week 18 conversation rest versus rust we've heard it before a lot of patriots fans will be bringing up 2007 so luckily the chiefs lost this game south so we don't have to hear about all this is this a good thing like uh like how i'm feeling about this mm, i know what you're saying and i'm not saying they tried to lose that game the chiefs of course they're very competitive and nobody wants to see those ancient dolphins from the early 1970s pretending to drink champagne when their <laughs> record isn't broken when someone finally loses um but yes, you're right. What do they care? What do they really care? And they're still in the driver's seat for the one seed. They have a game lead on the Bills. You know, the Bills have the 49ers, Rams, and Lions. If they take two of the three, they're in okay shape. But the Chiefs have your Panthers. Maybe the Chiefs were looking ahead to your Panthers. No one's ever said that, right? That yeah. could be it. They could have been looking ahead on the schedule. So, And even if they do fall behind and get a second seed, we've seen them do it on the road in Buffalo specifically, so it's not the end of the world, and I don't think Andy Reid is treating it as such. And it took a lot of pressure off their backs, even Travis Kelsey leaving the game with a little clap to the crowd in Buffalo. It almost yeah. felt like when your little brother beats you in something for the first time as the big brother, and uh, you're almost too nice about it, and it doesn't feel like you almost earned it, but the Bills fans will celebrate nonetheless. Another one. I don't for know what Kelsey <laughs> gets, uh, that vitriol he yeah. reaches down. Ever since he's met, met up with that girl, I don't know, I forget her name, but boy, uh, the mm. worst comes out in him. Yeah, it seems like he's changed uh, in real time, really? so I don't know what's going on. Uh, another first tape for you. Uh, speaking of changing, I think changing teams is ahead for this quarterback. Aaron Rodgers will be the quarterback of the Minnesota Vikings next season, Sal. I see the future. I, I This weekend, my wheels were spinning. I feel like he's on the Favre plan. Favre had one year with the New York Jets before he moved on. This is basically the one year for Aaron Rodgers, and now they just lost their GM. They've lost their head coach. He's running out of people to blame. Next up is the owner, and I think he's going to finally say, say la vie, uh, and, and move on to his next team, which is the Minnesota Vikings. I can mm. feel it. And if Minnesota had a quarterback, Sal, they might be able to win the Super Bowl this year yeah sure but i don't know if it's the vikings i don't think he believes in vikings he doesn't believe in <laughs> seafaring warriors from Sc scandinavia he's done the research he's told us so many times he's done the research this guy really did it he really crushed that whole organization that jets organization talk about draining the swamp the gm is out now the gm by the way who the owner said just a few weeks ago said that this is the best roster we've had in 25 years <laughs> yeah that's the gm who put that together and right. now aaron Rodgers got rid of him he got rid of the coach he got all his friends in there don't get me started with this because they're all gone because he's a petulant Iowa whiner and that's that and the jets deserve what they get i i hope the vikings fans are smart enough to not fall for that hysteria if he is to go there. Yeah, he'd be uh, back in the division with the Packers. we get a little rivalry going on. We'll see what happens. But I do feel like that's on the horizon. Last one, Sal, last first date here. You either die a hero or you live long enough to fight Jake Paul on Netflix. That is where we are in society. Mike Tyson all cheeked up on our TVs this weekend. And uh, not the fight that we were hoping for, but he did finish the fight. Um, but your, your just thoughts on this whole kind of journey and arc for someone like Mike Tyson where you get to – the the, the top of the mountain and then all of a sudden you look up you know 30 years later and you're fighting jake paul on netflix for uh clout i guess is the best way to put it and 20 it's million rough. dollars which isn't bad yeah the 20 million uh makes it stink just a little bit less but uh and i'm one of those dumb sports fans i was just talking about who bet tyson even though you and i a week ago today laid it out exactly how it was gonna go right paul's gonna win by decision that's plus 300 that's the way to do it I'm thankful that I saw Mike Tyson's ass and that part wasn't buffering on uh, my Netflix, um, you know, my feed there. That was the clearest but, uh, shot all night somehow. Yeah, exactly. They know they know what they're doing. Jake Paul, by the way, he's figured it out, right? He's mm -hmm. hit the sports lottery. He could pretty much guarantee he's not going to get seriously injured and goes in there and 
He's hit sports gold, and I wish him luck in his next fight against, what, Clint Eastwood? I don't even know who's next. Yeah, it would be a good one. I think I'm going to start challenging old sports stars. Like when they're Michael Jordan, one versus one when he turns 80, you know what I mean? And then oh. you can beat these guys, and then you have it for the rest of your career. You say you beat Michael Jordan one-on-one. So maybe he's got something figured out so, uh, that we didn't we know was even possible. We would still bet Jordan, right? If Jordan went <laughs> right. against Giannis, we'd be like, I don't know. And we'd watch Jordan highlights. Yeah. And we'd like, oh, look how he sunk that. Look at that dunk from the free throw. Look right. at this. And then, like. Jordan plus five and a half seems crazy, and then he gets skunked 11 nothing. Yeah, we'll talk ourselves into it every single time, and that's why it keeps happening and it keeps working. And uh, something that does keep happening on the show, we keep playing my favorite game, over-under reactions. I read a prompt to you, Sal, and you tell me if why it's— Why do we keep doing we this? We got to do it. Uh, we, just to stick it to <laughs> Joe House. That's why we got to do it. Uh, right. Over-under reactions. Sometimes we get proper reactions, and I say to you, Sal, first one, the only reason to not believe in the Detroit Lions is because they are, in fact— the Detroit Lions over or under reaction. They're now the Super Bowl favorites for the first time ever. Um, Interesting. You know what I mean? So Detroit over or under reaction. I would say under reaction. Well, that, you know what? The other reason other than them being cursed uh, <laughs> is that I have a lot of money on them. Okay. So maybe that's part of the curse. I have them to win the NFC. I have them to have the most wins. I have them to win the uh, NFC North, which looks like it should be okay. But there's no flaws in this team, at least in the last month. And it's weird that they've sort of gotten better since Hutchinson went out. That doesn't make any sense at all. They beat the heck out of the, uh, I mean, th these crap teams against them don't have a chance. And then they win in bad weather conditions against Green Bay. And they come back against Houston like we saw. So they're in good shape. Um, you know, I, I think they, they're they just going to dominate the rest of the way. And uh, yes, they lost in a weird fashion to San Francisco in the championship game last year. So that's where the curse sets in. But maybe, maybe they've overridden that. Yeah, and Danimal, Dan Campbell, is having yeah. a great time uh, running up the score on these teams. So <laughs> the Detroit Lions, they are getting the full redemption from, you know, they go from the 0-16 season to where they are now. It has been quite the journey for Detroit fans. Happy for them. Next up, Sal, I say Josh Allen's touchdown run was, in fact, the play of the year, as called by Jim Nance. A lot of people doing revisionist history, but in real time, fourth down to beat the undefeated team in the league. I think it was a pretty big play over or under reaction. What say you, Sal? Well, I say I can get a I can get a first hand account of this because I'm talking to Jim Nance tomorrow. It'll be on yeah. Cousin Sal's winning weekend. Right. I'm gonna ask him about this tape, but I think he's right without even asking him. It's like, yeah, this was the biggest play of the year. You could go about I know they want to say Bears and Washington Hell Mary, but that's gonna be inconsequential as we see it. Washington will make the playoffs. The Bears won't, but this is big. This is knocking off. As much as I don't think the Chiefs needed to go undefeated, this was this had consequence to it and not to mention Jim Nance is probably freezing everybody wants to get out of Buffalo he's just happy to go home he's yeah and if home. Kansas City is playing you know in Buffalo in the playoffs because they are the one seed uh right. you know what I mean that's going to be very consequential so it goes back to what we're saying player what about of the, year? the Cowboys fake punts though those weren't the best plays of the year I mean yeah. there's two you could choose from there. right so there's, many <laughs> I think when the ceiling was falling was the player of the year or the dodge <laughs> of the year who knows uh next up Sal bingling uh bingling is the new charge Chargering is what they're saying over or under reaction. Obviously, uh, two unstoppable franchises or very stoppable franchises, whichever way you look at it this weekend on Sunday night, battling it out. But the Chargers come away with the win over or under reaction. Well, the 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 big overreaction is uh, nephew Kyle just disowning <laughs> you as a friend. I know. Very upset. That yeah. game. But you're right. The Bengals and Chargers. We've seen both those teams lose that exact game. A million times, right? I'm surprised the coaches didn't just get together and say, can we walk away with a tie? I think that would be the West best way to play this. But Zach Taylor, yes, you're right. It is bangling. Is it Tay-Tay? Is it Tay-Taying maybe now? <laughs> maybe he's the most interesting right. Taylor right there. It's Zach, the coach for the Bengals. I will say this. It is rough for them. They have a great, great quarterback. Burrow had nine touchdowns combined against the Ravens and walked away with no wins and the Steelers had no touchdowns and pulled out a victory so the Bengals are snake bitten yeah and Joe Burrow has the Phillip Rivers face on just of uh just uh -huh. kind of just shocked he doesn't really know what's happening he's like why are we not winning these football games so uh very similar right, right there Cincinnati and now the LA Chargers next up South Chris Boswell is now Justin Tucker's kicking daddy uh obviously six for six this weekend in the rivalry game uh Justin Tucker after the game said field conditions were quote not ideal over or mm -hmm. under reaction your thoughts on boswell versus justin tucker ideal for the other guy who went six for six mm -hmm. in, in field goals so i don't know how but maybe the just where the t was with the i did not even using a t i have no idea what happened here <laughs> with tucker maybe he's just not good 
Uh, I'd say underreaction because I don't know if that he's specifically his daddy. He might have 29 NFL daddies right now, Justin Tucker, <laughs> better than him. He has a lot of cards to send out in June for Father's Day. But the fact that Eddie Pinheiro has passed him. Yeah. And did you see this? For Carolina Panthers percentage? legend. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> who has like three <laughs> memorable field goals in his life. And this guy is number one. Um, I, I just, uh, bigger point. I don't know how the Steelers are winning games like this in 2024. Tomlin should be coach of the year. And I know I'll change my mind about 45 times between now and January, but that's what I'm going with. Yeah. I think uh, anyone hurting Justin Tucker's hall of fame, uh, you know, kind of yeah. uh, pitch here is a, is a winner. So J Mike Tomlin is one of those guys next up under five and a half NFL head coaching jobs will be available at the end of the season. The most we've ever seen is 10. That is the record and uh, over under reaction. What say you, Sal? It's a good line. I wrote it down. 2020, there were five. 21, there were seven. 22, there were 10, as you said. Last year, or 23, there was five. Oh, 24, that counts as this year. It was mm -hmm. eight. Anyway, I'd go over. <laughs> Jets, Jags, Cowboys, Bengals, Colts, Dolphins, Panthers, Giants. I think six of those eight will definitely need new skippers. And I'll tell you what, I think Matt Gates is the man for the job if he's not busy. Put <laughs> yeah, him anywhere. Right. right. And there's yeah. also the situation where we did have the holdover guys from last year, guys that we thought would get fired, like an Eberflus with Chicago. So right. there's guys that are basically dead men walking at this point that are head coaches in the NFL. So the numbers will get juiced because of those guys being holdovers. Next up, Sal, going to a game at AT&T Stadium in Dallas is more thrilling than a trip to Six Flags. Obviously, we didn't see this weekend. <laughs> a lot of chicanery happening there over under reaction your thoughts on AT&T Stadium oh, I love it yeah six flags is Jerry handing out flash passes to yeah skip the line of I course love it. can you skip it and get to hit get hit by debris I mean it's not bad enough the sun is in everyone including the players faces and now there's flying debris you have to worry about but look if the product on the field is disgusting you might as well make it a little dangerous for the fans <laughs> right. add some excitement right some some flying scaffolding material right there and uh, you know oh geez there's going to be a lawsuit. He's going to die penniless and without a title in the 2000s. They Just missed it. Years. Halloween was the time. They could have done a Horror Nights there right. at AT&T Stadium. They show, like, the Dez catch. They show, like, all these moments throughout, you know, Jerry's time there, firing certain people, whatever it is. You know what I mean? That would have been yep. a great, uh, you know, uh, marketing moment there for Jerry. Maybe He doesn't next know when Halloween is. He's so lost. <laughs> you could tell him it's next week. He'll yeah. start it over. That's right. Well, we're getting close to Christmas. So I say to you, Sal, NFL is the Grinch that uh. stole Christmas Day away away from the NBA. We got a Beyonce halftime show coming and uh, NBA fans, NBA holes everywhere are concerned about this over or under reaction. Your thoughts on the NFL taking away this day? I'm under reaction. I'm mm. sorry. I, why, why should the NBA have Christmas when games that don't really matter, the players don't really want to play in those games. You can tell they don't want to. It's coming off the NBA Cup, which is hilarious. It's like a week after that. So they would rather have the time off. Do we really care about the T-Wolves versus the Mavericks while I'm uh, trying not to step on Legos that my kid opened and let, left under the tree, you know, and all throughout the house? No, I don't care. I want to see Chiefs and Steelers, two teams who are really battling to make the playoffs and get the one seed and things like that. So good for Beyonce, good for the NFL. Yeah, big win for football. They do it again. Uh, and speaking of football, let's talk about college football. So Travis Hunter, Colorado's own, will strike over 0.5 more poses, Heisman poses, on his way to the Heisman. The odds are set at minus 330. Do we think that we see it again over or under reaction? I think he gets it. I think we see the pose again. You know, we could see it right in December first week when he actually wins the award. So I, you know, listen, it, it, two, a two-way player, terrific. Colorado's having a big year. Dion knows just how to pad his stats and just wants <laughs> almost nothing more than to get this kid the award. Um, and I, if, as far as I'm concerned, he gets the Shohei Otani two-way treatment. He's going to get it as long as now. If they lose to Kansas this week. It, that might shrink a little bit, but I don't think so. I yeah. think he's going to be right there. Yeah, I think we're trending towards uh, Travis winning the Heisman, Shador going number one, and Dion getting the Cowboys job, which oh, would be no. the biggest three for three oh, no. in, in Sanders sick. family history. So that's where we're trending towards. Oh, Last drop one. Drop something so. on my head, Jerry, please. <laughs> yeah, for, let the roof. It. Come on, we need to take you to AT&T Stadium. Last one, Sal. John Bone Jones is the greatest combat sport athlete of all time. Over or under reaction? You know more than me, but he had a big fight this weekend. Well, I'll say under reaction, and okay. I'm just going to go by from when I was alive. So I'm going to say Mike Tyson, not the version we saw with the knee brace <laughs> the other day and who couldn't punch, um, the, the one from the mid-'80s and early-'90s, that, that Mike Tyson. I would say John Bones Jones 
And I'd say Ray Mysterio. When that 619 Oof. is working, man, look out. Nobody's, no one's getting past that. But I'm going to say John Bones Jones. It's unfair because he has all these disciplines that you can't compare to a boxer, but I feel like he can beat you 15 different ways. I mean, that back kick to the liver is just insane. It wasn't one of the top 10 ways I thought he'd take out Steep A. So, you know, listen, I'm going to say yes. And if they never invented drug tests, well, law enforcement, this wouldn't even be a conversation. Yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. Even though I would throw in Ron Artest, Mouse at the Palace is one of my dark horse That's picks good. there. You know what I mean? That would be a good anniversary. one. Uh, yeah, the yeah. anniversary is today. Uh, let's uh, do some prop culture. Let's call up the captain and let's get our Riverboat question of the week here. The, the big question, Sal, everyone's asking this, is what should be the next live event on Netflix? We got the odds here. MMA fight, Conor McGregor versus Jake Paul is the number one, uh, the favorite at 3-1. to one. We got the roast of Michael Jordan at 5-1. to one. We got Drake versus Kendrick Lamar in a rap battle at eight to one, and we got a spelling bee between Gronk and Shaq at twenty-five to one. The field is even odds. What say you, Sal? What do we need? What do we need next on Netflix? I wouldn't mind seeing that spelling bee. Me at too. All. I'd like to see all of these, but <laughs> I'll tell you what: if I have to pick one, five to one odds, never bet against Jordan. Right. Never do it. The Michael Jordan roast. I would love this. You know, you, you first of all, all the topics: the duel with Isaiah Thomas. You got the Jerry Krause stuff. You got the you know, Scotty Pippen unpleasantness. You got the fact that his son is dating or whatever. Scotty Pippen. What, what was it? Scotty Pippen's wife. Is that what's going on? Yes, here? that's a, yes. Michael trying. Jordan's son, Mark, is dating Scotty Pippen's ex-wife. Right. You got the <laughs> biggest divorce in uh, American history with Juanita, the biggest settlement with Juanita Jordan. Mm -hmm. um, you got the fact that he was. A baseball player you got the fact oh he had a, a tremendous gambling problem right a crippling gambling addiction <laughs> it would be better than the brady roast and i feel like rodman would be his gronk and uh that would take care of that that's my pick i like it a lot i'm gonna go field here i'm gonna go with Bronny james versus marcus jordan 101 the match uh this is what everybody wants to see marcus jordan let's give him a year to get in shape let's let Bronny nice. keep playing in the g league and let's get these guys to play 101 to see who actually is the goat uh the son that wins the game gets to claim the goat you know for the rest of all the basketball eternity it's the match on tnt marcus jordan versus Bronny james 101 uh first to 21 and, and let's see what happens. Ones and twos. I love it. I'm in. I think uh, the, the big daddy LeBron wouldn't allow for it to happen unless he was the special <laughs> guest referee. Right. Yeah. And he gets the coach, ref, yeah. GM, all everything, uh, you know, but that would be fun. I would love to see that. I feel like it's necessary at this point with all the conversations that are happening. So That's shout right. out to the captain. Got some good prop culture. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back with Cousin Sal, we're going to do some line look aheads and some track to the future. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Through the Ringer. I'm still your host, Tate Frazier, and we are here with Cousin Sal, and we are trying to make sense of what's happening in the world of sports. It's always a I, fun I like, time. I like how you say, I'm sorry. You say, I'm still your host. Like, oh my God, <laughs> no, something I, horrible happened over the, the commercial break. That's uh, the bit. Who knows? the Sky Rizzy ad for the 5,000th time today. Tate was replaced. <laughs> by uh, Brian Curtis. I think what, year what, three, gonna I'm going to have someone slide in here. Uh, maybe I have <laughs> okay. you take over the hosting duties and we have some fun with it. That's the bit. It. You never know if it's going to be me on the other side, but I am back here and we get to talk about Thursday night football. Very fortunate to do this. And let's do a line look ahead here. Sal, we got the Steelers taking on the Cleveland Browns. This is in Cleveland, plus three and a half for the Browns. Total 35 and a half. Uh, a chance here for a Pittsburgh letdown game. Just flagging that for all the people. But Thursday night football is a little wacky, a little wonky, dare I say but what do you like in this one so this is a tough one for me because on sunday night with simmons i guess like five and a half or something and it, i still think it should be that high after watching these two teams play for two months or whatever it's been but it is three and a half and i get it a little bit it's a division game you're talking about a bruiser the steelers had a real bruising game against the ravens and Jameis, by the way is still hugging ex-teammates on the field in the <laughs> superdome so they're definitely different last year's games were decided by a combined seven points. So you might say that that's why also it's low. Uh, probably a stay away from me, except for the Sal Steel City special, mm -hmm. which is Brown's first half. Steelers win the game. We'll pay close to eight to one this week. Yeah, I feel like the letdown happens in the first half, the first half, which is why I feel like the Steel City special is definitely in play, Sal. And you also like a player prop in this game on the Pittsburgh side of things, correct? 
I do. Pat Fryermuth, uh, over 18 and a half yards. He's gone over 18 in 10 of his last 13 games. He's averaged 33 and a half over that span. The Browns allow 47 plus yards to the lead tight end in three of their last five games. We're just looking for 18, not 47. I don't even know why I said that number. We're going to get it <laughs> Thursday night, Tate. Fans aren't booing, you know. They're yelling Muth. Mm-hmm. Although they might not be yelling that in, in Cleveland. So. I can't wait till he has 47 yards and we pull this up and we, <laughs> we do the Nostradamus thing. I'm like, Sal was seeing the future. He knew what was going to happen. Uh, you love the race to 10, Sal, in basketball. And I like the race to 10 in football this weekend, oh. in this game in particular. I'm going to take the Browns race to 10 at plus 130. You can find this on FanDuel right now. But I just feel like the Browns get out to an early lead. Jameis scores an early touchdown. It's 10 to 3. Cleveland fans are getting excited. It, you know, it's all kind of setting itself up for... The Steel City special, as you mentioned at the top here. So uh, the race to 10, I like the Browns, but I like the Steelers to win I the like game. It. So Have you, you tried race to 69 in the NFL? It's I'm... kind of boring. You don't know. <laughs> the Lions are the only team that gives you a chance. Right. right? That's what I need the animal to, to get us there. But, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. It works in college basketball. We need to get that uh, on the FanDuel site. We'll see if we can get there. Uh, let's track to the future here, Sal. Let's talk about the 49ers. Uh, chances to make the playoffs. We got the odds here. Yes is plus 168. No minus 210. Obviously a team that a lot of people like this year to come back get back to the Super Bowl and potentially win the Super Bowl now trying to you know get into a position to just make the playoffs but what do you like here do you like the the Niners to make the postseason well I'm going to do a complete 180 from where we were last week when I said (laughs) San Francisco is going to beat Seattle and pull away from the division they're going to start um and then they really look like crap they can't close these games out and so I'm going to say no Tate at minus 210 that lost to Seattle lost left a terrible taste in my mouth so um Listen, Debo Samuel, not as scary a player. You got Kittle almost always injured. Uh, you know, Ayuk is out. That offense isn't doing it for me. Brock Purdy now has a shoulder injury. So I'm not sure even where this team is. I, Purdy, by the way, in the last two games hasn't attempted a pass 20 or more yards. And now Bose is out or day-to-day. So this is a rough one. They're at Packers, at Bills, Rams, Dolphins, Cardinals. They have a tough slate. I think they have to go 5-2. and two the rest of the way. I don't think they're getting there. Yeah, and it does seem like Shanahan is very frustrated this season. Every time they show him on the sidelines, it just feels like uh, he's just getting smacked in the face yet again, and uh, yeah. you know, I feel bad for him over there, but the 49ers, that could be a team, dark horse team that could go after the services of a quarterback. Uh, you know, I know I mentioned the Vikings at the top, but who knows, if they turn on Purdy, Sal, you know, Mr. Irrelevant, there's a chance they could go for, uh, you know, a guy like Why are you trying to kill Kirk every Cousins? NFL franchise no, with I'm just, Rodgers? I'm just trying to, I'm just doing some Come matchmaking on. here, trying to figure out you know, Kirk Cousins has obviously been the apple of Shanahan's eye for quite some time. He can opt yeah. out or get traded out of Atlanta. I don't know. I'm just saying there's some options for the 49ers if they do want to make some changes. But again, this is all next year. Uh, let's move from the NFL to college football. The upset special, Sal. We have been trying to get this together. Uh, you got it going uh, for a little bit here. You got a little bit of a rhythm. Um, I have been absolutely abysmal. I've been so bad that our, you know, overlords here at FanDuel, they have banned me from making a pick. They, they have really? said they do, do not want me. They want you to well, tell people who to, who's going to lose. I think yeah, they're just trying. To, they're making too much money, <laughs> Sal, at this point. I they're see, saying, uh, please stop. We, we can't do this. We can't keep diving in all the gold coins that you're bringing in. Uh, this week, Football, college football upset specials. Who do you like, Sal? Well, yeah, you like you said, I I, I think I won my first four when right. I did this in the beginning of the year. Now I've lost three in a row, and this is why you just have to walk away from the table when your chips are stacked. I should have walked away from sports gambling altogether, Tate, three weeks ago. But I'm going Gators over Old Miss. They're 5-5, five and five, but I think they're a little better than that Florida. They handed LSU a double-digit loss. Freshman DJ Lagway came back after his injury, did pretty well, 220 yards. And a touchdown against LSU. Didn't make mistakes. I think this is a shootout. Jackson Dart falls short in a last possession type game. Give me Billy Napier's Gators to keep their bowl hopes alive. I think you get about plus 260 on that. Yeah, plus 275 now, Sal. Wow. So it's even moving in, in the right direction for you. Also, it's one of those things where good news for Florida and Ole Miss, no matter who wins or loses, you're both going to make the playoffs. Uh, that's how it works now, Sal. I think everybody in the SEC, right, they just get to go wow. to the playoffs. So that's a uh, five and seven Florida team. That would be interesting. <laughs> Congratulations, Florida. Foul. You're in the playoffs. Yeah. I mean, you're better than everybody else, obviously, because you play in the SEC. Congratulations. Uh, <laughs> I did say I've been banned, uh, but I'm going to go against my heart here. I'm going to take Boston oh, College. 
Okay. Uh, you know what I mean? Money line this weekend against my Tar Heels. So I feel like this is a smart play. Uh, my heart would say take Carolina, but my head is saying to take Boston College. If you've been keeping up with the college football upset specials, probably the time to fade me. So maybe take Carolina. I don't know where you land on this, but just putting it out there. Um, it's a nice emotional hedge for you. <laughs> yeah, I see. Yeah. Something there. I can, I can make something work. And uh, I mentioned the SEC before. Let's do a track to the future here, Sal. Tennessee to make the playoffs again this mm. year. We have 12 teams in. Uh, yes, is minus 160 no plus 128 obviously indiana playing at ohio state this weekend that's going to answer a lot of these questions about the big 10 and you know how some of this stuff is going to shake out but your thoughts on tennessee do you think they get into the playoff i'm gonna say no i Mm. am i have no at minus uh, plus 114 right so now their last two games they should crush utep they should beat vanderbilt although vanderbilt really put a snag in this season by beating alabama who knows um so But I don't think they control their own destiny, right? I feel like they're 13th or 14th right now. Old Miss and or Indiana could fall out, but also A&M could jump in with a win over Texas. It's all kind of chaotic. Josh Heupel's team, if they had not lost by two touchdowns to Georgia after being up 10-0, you know, if that's a one-score game, maybe you'll look at it differently, but I'm leaning no right now. Yeah, how crazy is it going to get, Sal, when this decision is made, they get the 12 teams in, and there's going to be maybe an Indiana or a Tennessee or an Ole Miss gets left out. Like, what is the reaction from the fan bases? I feel like this might be nuclear. I, I don't know yeah. I don't know if it goes all the way to the top. I don't know if we get to, like, people going to the Capitol and storming it, but uh, it does feel like something bad is going to happen once these 12 teams are picked because a lot of people think they should be in the playoff. Yeah, they're probably going to take the goalposts, light them on fire, right. and carry them to the city hall and go right through the front steps, right through the doors. Yeah. There. But yeah, listen, I, I think the SEC fans, I know what you're getting at. A lot, a lot of crybabies on that side. Mm-hmm. And they don't realize that you have to take a Big 12, you have to take an ACC, and you have to take what? A Mountain West, right? Those three. So that's right. three slots plus Notre Dame is going to be eaten up. Plus, you're not going to win the SEC. So there's going to be an SEC winner and a Big 10 winner. So. I don't know why they think they can get like seven or eight teams from this conference. Well, they want seven and they expect seven. And uh, (laughs) the backlash from not giving getting seven is going to be hilarious. So I I am going to sit there with my popcorn and watch all of the chaos (laughs) play out. It's going to be a lot of fun. Poor uh, committee members. I know they're going to be getting a lot of uh, emails and messages and all types of stuff. So, uh, you know, just uh, if you have any of those people in your life, pray for them. Uh, Another track to the future here. So NFL Offensive Rookie of the Year, Jaden Daniels, obviously is running away with this a little bit. But it is trending back towards, uh, you know, the other direction. Minus 550 right now. He was minus 600 at the start of the day. Bo Nix is sitting there at plus 400. Who do you like for Offensive Rookie of the Year, Sal? Yeah, Bo was plus 1,200 before week 10, and now he's down to plus 400. But this is tough for me. It really is. I'm torn because I come from a Duck family. My kid goes there. You know, he's a sophomore. I should be pulling for them. But my preseason pick was Jaden Daniels at 6-1. to one. So. Mm-hmm. I want to take that money I win with that and then pay some of that duck tuition, right? So I don't know. Right. It's interesting. The fact that both Denver and Washington are over there, Washington's way over their preseason projected win total uh, is pretty good. We're talking middle November right here. But the Broncos tape play the Chargers and Bengals back to back in December. If they take both of those, I think that's Bo Nick's path to win this award. I can't believe we're having the conversation where Bo Nix, Bo Nix could backdoor his way into the Offensive Rookie of the Year, but that just says something about how long this season is in the NFL and the fact that if you got a head coach like Sean Payton, sometimes things work out for you. Doing a great job. Yeah, yep. doing a great job. He could be in that conversation for Coach of the Year. Who knows? Line, look ahead. Uh, let's do an NBA one quickly, Sal. Suns at Knicks. Uh, the opening line is around minus five and a half here for the Knicks at home in this game Nick's trending in the right direction Carl Towns is playing a little bit better especially on the offensive side of the ball who do you like in this one and uh, what should we expect uh, in this game so Suns are a weird team right they've Mm -hmm. lost four in a row I think I think they're 17th offensively 21st defensively but they're going up against what should be an exhausted Knicks team or Tibbs is already running these guys into the ground not so much Towns I think he only had 25 minutes but I'm going to go with Phoenix to pull this out at least by the spread getting a few points I think that'll go lower as game time approaches is they're seven and three against the spread and five and two on their home court. Give me a Tyus Jones night um, to remember 
and the Suns cover and maybe even win. Yeah, it does feel like the Suns came out. Great first impression. Uh, and then they started patting themselves on the back and then things went sideways a little right. bit. And now they're trying to get back on track. So I like that pick there. Last thing, Sal, before we let you go, the Tate debate this week. I say to you, Sal, the art of the touchdown celebration is losing its luster. It's kind of like film, you know, the film industry. Too many remakes. Mm. We've seen it before. It, it doesn't hit the same. Uh, you know, I saw the first Mr. Deeds. I don't need to see the second one. That sort of angling is where we're getting at. And we saw it with Jamar Chase. Uh, cleaning up the ball, the baby uh, celebration, the same thing that we saw from Steve Smith from quite a quite a while ago. Steve Smith did it properly, though. He threw away the rag after he wiped up the baby. Uh, <laughs> Jamar Chase, he threw the football, so he literally threw the baby uh, in yes. his celebration, which he is... He executed the baby. Yeah, it's, it's a, a little bit... Yeah. It kind of shows how dark we've gotten in our times, right. but uh, I think with the, the touchdown celebration is trending down, Sal. Uh, do, do you agree with me, or do you think there's a chance where we get a little bit of a revival here? It's funny. I got like 20 years on you and you're the curmudgeon here because I think <laughs> I don't mind the recycled comedy. Okay. We get recycled comedy in comedy. We have mm-hmm. comedians going city to city, right? We have bands doing the same songs they've been doing since the mid 80s. So I feel like and Jamar Chase had 39 touchdowns. You have to kind of double up on stuff once in a while. You know, you're, so you're not going to go see Gladiator 2, Tate? I'm, I'm just saying, like, this is uh, this is all what we've seen before. Well, I'm going to go see Gladiator 2, so maybe I'm okay. a hypocrite now uh, because, you know, as maybe. I said, there's there's too many remakes, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm going to go see one. Right. Or I guess it's not a remake, but, you know, it's an adaptation. Yeah, it's, a, you know, it's the, the story continues, whatever you want to call it. But uh, shout out to Steve Smith. I like the original, Sal. That's all it is. I like I the originators. You. You know? It was like the Panthers' only touchdown that year. That's why we were excited. <laughs> it was a great one, too. We all remember it. That's, that's all we need. <laughs> I like when he did the uh, unguard with the fencing, you know, with the football. Right. That was a great one. Steve Smith, great guy for celebrations in the end zone. He's one of the best. Uh, Sal, you got a big show this week. Jim Nance, uh, promote that for the people, and then we'll let you go enjoy Jim the rest Nance of your day. On, yes, Cousin Sal's winning weekend, Friday morning, right here on FanDuel TV. We got Against All Odds on the Ringer Podcast Network and the Ringer pregame show Sunday. It's the best of times. Sal, you're the best. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Stay tuned. Stay right there. We'll be back on the other side of the break with Big Wasp. We'll see you then. Welcome back to Through the Rigger. Joining us now from Group Chat. He is back on the show. It is Big Waz. Waz, good to see you, man. How are you? I'm good, man. Can't complain. I think this is the first time I'm seeing your your home studio oh, set yeah. up. And, and that <laughs> pink picture, it says Royal Tannen Bombs, but I thought it was somebody else, man. Perhaps a, a two-time <laughs> President uh, elect. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> that's what I thought I was looking at. I was like, oh, okay, that's that's a, that's an interesting choice of no, artwork over that, there. That, that would be definitely something interesting. Uh, just to respect to uh, <laughs> Wes Anderson here, you know what I mean? In the house, uh, shout out to Royal Tenenbaum. Definitely some similar tendencies, but not quite there. But yeah, it's good to have you on the show, Waz. And we got a lot to get to in the NBA. There's a lot happening. One thing that we're all talking about. It's on the tip of our tongues the nba cup now this is confusing for the american fan not so much for the european fan Mm -hmm. right um and that's sort of the the difference in opinion typically on what's happening but how much are you keeping up with the group stage of the nba cup how much do we need to know about it and like where do we stand right now with where it sits um when i'm when it's on i'm obviously watching and i think some of these games have actually delivered a crazy amount of drama um Mm. the freaking dallas mavericks warriors game was Electric. That was, you know, and I hate the playoff level intensity cliche, but that's what it was. Like Steph, Draymond, um, Clay Thompson, these people were heavily committed to winning that game. Like they they cared about the outcome of that game. And I think it showed from the product on the court. And I think the upstarts, you know, the sort of younger teams, the Atlantas, the Detroits, um, the Orlandos, these guys want to make a mark. Um, Mm -hmm. And I think getting to play on a huge stage like the cup affords, like everybody goes to Vegas and, you know, you're 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 basically the only game in town when that's happening. I I think people are looking forward to that. Let's talk about the New York Knicks. They're on a three game win streak right now. It does feel like they're finding their footing outside of the Rick Brunson inquiry that's happening. What's happening on the court is good things for the New York Knicks and they play Wednesday night against the Suns. Do you feel like the cat experiment is finally settling in? right now and uh, what are your thoughts on the Knicks in general 
Yeah, I feel like the cat thing, the offense, the move was made to goose an offense that was absolutely too J- Jalen Brunson reliant um, in the playoffs and in the past. And they wanted to add an extra layer and dynamic um, and dynamism, quite frankly, to what they were doing on the offensive side of the ball. I think everybody knew this wasn't a Tibbs sort of branded trade in terms of how much worse it would make them on defense, specifically with Mitchell Robinson being out for so long. Um, and, you know, Cat's problems as a defensive five being so pronounced, um, as evidenced by his former team going out and getting another max contract center to play center next to him. I think everybody knew there was going to be a sort of offense for defense trade-off. But at the very least, yes, the defense has been compromised. They're in the freaking 20s. It's awful. Um, That can't continue if they're going to reach their ultimate goals, which I think for the Knicks is to make it to Eastern Conference and eventually the NBA Finals. But on the offensive end, they got a top three offensive rating, um, which was just out of the question um, in previous Knicks iterations. And so the theory that uh, Carl Anthony Towns would make them a much better and tougher offensive team to match up with and deal with has been proven and Carl Towns has been a monster on offense like he's had like two 40 point games five 30 point games like he's already been you know he's 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 proven that he's he's one of those guys offensively I think they have to become a way more connected group because Carl Towns does have those shortcomings as a rim protecting five but I think they do have the talent in terms of perimeter talent with guys like Bridges with guys like OG Ananobi Josh Hart to sort of mitigated not going to be a perfect defense Mm -hmm. but I think they could be much better than what they've shown so far yeah and DiVincenzo was so necessary on the defensive end especially guarding guards uh so they need to fill that hole still Cat averaging 28 points per game and 13 rebounds in the month of November so that is encouraging for Knicks fans like you said on the offensive end it's all hunky-dory the defense is what they got to figure out and Tibbs he's a man built to figure that out let's talk about the 76ers they got a lot to figure out Is the season already over um, is what people are asking in Philadelphia. I mean, we're only 13 games in, but it does feel like it's slipping by the wayside in real time. The season is far from over. Um, One, because they do have a lot of talent on the roster. It's not like they're like a trade away from, you know, some massive talent upgrade. This is not a 2-11 roster. Mm -hmm. Um Uh, Also, what goes in their favor, they play in the Eastern Conference or the Leastern Conference, Mm -hmm. as we like to call it in the biz, (laughs) Tate. Um, And and those things are in their favor. They're probably like four games out of home court right now. Uh, The four seed probably is a six-win outfit. Only four teams above 500 in the Least (laughs) Conference right now. Yeah. So, So these things are going in their favor. However... You know, the fact that they're holding some emergency meeting where Maxi is calling out their best player for being late to quote unquote everything. He said Joe Wellen <laughs> feet is late to everything. <laughs> <laughs> like that's not good. Paul George missing all this time already. That's not good. We know Joe Embiid has to ramp up in terms of his conditioning. And, you know, there's always just a lingering injury concern. And now Maxi turns up with a hamstring, which happens to be a usage injury, Mm -hmm. right? Like these muscle injuries are heavily tied to, you know, the wear and tear sort of thing. So, yeah, the the season has started about as piss poorly as could have been imagined. But it's just hard for me to think that these guys are in grave danger of not turning this around at all and being just like a a lottery basement dwelling team like they're too talented for that to be the case and Maxie said to the people quote don't give up I believe in this team Maxie is a very positive guy always has a smile on his face love him for him to be the one in this meeting calling out Embiid maybe that is the spark that gets things going for the Sixers we'll see what happens like you said in the east anything is possible because there's not that many good teams another team that is trying to claw their way back into the conversation the most Milwaukee Bucks. Giannis is leading the NBA in points per game right now. They just got a big win the other night. Um, Could have gone sour there at the end, but Giannis with a huge block down the stretch. The Bucks. they need Middleton back, obviously. They have Doc on the sidelines. Is there a world in which they can spin this back 180 and get things back into a conversation where they could win the East? Yeah, I think the the Bucs, it's crazy, but they absolutely need Middleton to get back to being like, 
good because I think the real premise, Middleton, right? Yeah, I think the premise of what the Bucks do is that they're a very top heavy team, and that top heaviness means that those guys have to dominate and then basically tread water or not get too smoked when they're. Let's face it, a quite atrocious bench so far this season gets into the game. Um, I, I think the problem for me when watching him, a lot of this stuff just doesn't feel like it's very sustainable, that it's part of some overarching theme of who the Bucks are and what they do at this juncture. I, I think there's a way for them to still be much better than they've shown, but I don't think they've put it on the court yet in terms of some sustainable consistency in how they go about attacking teams every day yeah I think the Lakers are definitely pulling against the Bucks because they want Brooke Lopez uh just putting that mm, on everybody's radar be nice. uh because that is the big I think that they're really after in the end uh there is someone that everyone is after in the NBA that is Cooper Flag, the presumptive number one pick so good in fact they're saying he could have been the number one pick in last year's draft uh this is how it works with the Duke propaganda arm um <laughs> but let's 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 say for example some of these teams want to capture the flag uh do we see that happening is there some teams that maybe sell uh, high to get in a position to get a guy like Cooper Flag in the East uh, because there aren't that many good teams as we mentioned before. I think all the flag teams are sort of already, you know, they've they've already got the their arms. Yeah, yeah the Jazz, the Jazz. <laughs> it's so hilarious because the Jazz are finally like making themselves into this piddling team that they should have been doing for like two years now. Mm -hmm. They've been overachieving. Um, but yeah, Cooper Flag, they're like, all right, let's get serious about getting in the business of making <laughs> right. that happen. I they think, see Filipowski marking it in Flag as the greatest front court ever. Ooh, uh, child. <laughs> Listen, that could be a renaissance, a revolution. <laughs> I think our country is ready for that type of Royal revolution. Royal Tittenbaum would like that front court, that's for sure. It, yeah, that's for goddamn <laughs> sure. The last few weeks are to be um, understood. Um, yeah, obviously the Jazz. I think the Nets have been overachieving so far, but they're like literally mm. one trade away of trading one of their veteran guys from this thing being like, yeah, pure, you know, dregs of the league. Those those seem to be the two most serious outfits when it comes to um, capturing the flag. Yeah, and Cooper Flag is probably doing his fingers crossed right now saying, please, please, please don't send me to Charlotte. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back with Waz, we're going to talk about inside the NBA, getting a new home, and the rest of the happenings around the NBA. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Through the Ringer here on FanDuel TV. We are here with Waz, and we are trying to make sense of what's happening in the NBA, and there's a lot happening. We got some good news inside the NBA, Waz. We'll be now licensed to ESPN and ABC. It does find a new home. There were some questions about having Barkley and Kenny and Shaq and Ernie on our TVs moving forward past this season. The answers, uh, or the questions have been answered at this point. Your thoughts when you saw the news. Are you excited about this? Uh, you know, is this something that was near and dear to your heart? It does feel like a lot of people were moved by this decision to keep the show going on i mean obviously like any other you know card carrying nba <laughs> sicko uh mm -hmm. obviously i got a lot of love tied to um the inside the nba show chuck charles ernie kenny like you know like it just feels like the familiarity there and the entertainment product is so high quality um yeah, I'm super happy that it got to come back. I think it's a win for everybody. Speaking of wins, the Lakers are winning a lot of games, uh, you know, over the past month. LeBron James has been averaging a triple-double, also the most minutes on this team. Is it time to believe in the Lakers as a real contender, or, you know, do we fall into sort of the same trap that we did last year with the in-season tournament? Where do we stand on, you know, kind of a month into the Redick experience with this Lakers team? I think the Lakers are... It's fun that they have an actual offensive identity. Um, the centering of AD, which has been much long threatened, um, but <laughs> never seen to come, to, never seen to materialize, has finally, finally happening in an actual tangible way. And AD is playing like an MVP candidate because of it. Um, I think the defense is still problematic, uh, which is hilarious to me because I was told that Darvin Ham is a complete moron and idiot <laughs> because he was switching up the lineups to start last season because these guys could not guard anybody, um, specifically on the perimeter. They were just getting smoked at the point of attack. And lo and behold, J.J. Redick. 
takes mm -hmm. uh, D'Angelo Russell out the starting lineup because why? Because he's thinking it up on defense. I think they're going to have to figure something out with the perimeter defense, and I don't think they can be a real contender until they, like, really, really figure that out. But offensively, just the cohesion and, you know, just the fact that they have a definition of who they are and, and what they want to do on a night-to-night -night basis and the fact that it doesn't always have to be LeBron slicing people up and picking wrong. Like, Austin Reeves is a, like, A-level B plus level mm -hmm. pick and roll operator now. Like it's not Braun and AD have a have had a complete mind meld in the pick and roll basically since the day they stepped on the court together. Now AD is developing that with Austin Reeves. Like the fact that they could take turns killing defenses with that. Um, so much more movement and actions that they're running. Like, yeah, it's cool to see what they're doing on offense. But I think ultimately, man, if they're going to become a serious outfit, uh, they're going to have to shore up that point of attack defense. Yeah, the accountability I like from J.J. Redick, and you mentioned D'Angelo Russell has been the prime example of that so far this season, whether it's bad shots, bad turnovers, not you know giving the effort on the defensive end. Those are good things. And I will say, when the NBA is getting the ratings conversation, as we've seen over the first month, they do like to go back to the old well. And the well is Boston Celtics versus the L.A. Lakers in the NBA Finals. <laughs> and uh, you know what I mean? Just just putting that out there. So uh, the writing is right there on the wall. We'll see what happens. I do want to talk about the Warriors. They got Jerry Stackhouse, my guy, helping on the defensive side. Second best defense in the NBA behind the Thunder right now. They look really good. Uh, they're having a lot of fun. Currently 10-3, and three, second in the West. Your thoughts on the Warriors? Like, is the window still open? Because it looks open when you watch Steph Curry with this team. I think the defense is a real thing. Um, mm -hmm. the, the problem for me is the offense against the best teams, the best defenses. Are they going to be able to credibly, you know, put points on the board? Will their offense be credible uh, against the best teams in the postseason. That's where I'm kind of skeptical of the words. Uh, there is a lot of talk always in the NBA about disgruntled stars, trades on the horizon, mm -hmm. uh, and teams that could possibly make some trades. The Rockets are the one that seems to be in the conversation quite a bit right now. Could they take a big swing? I mean, they have the coach there. They have young talent. Uh, they have picks. Could they go after someone like a Giannis Antetokounmpo? Or like, if you're the Rockets, do you just kind of say, this is our group. We got Singoon. You know, we got Jalen Green, we got Jabari. You know what I mean? We kind of have our core guys, or do you take a big swing for a star? How do you feel about that? I mean, I'm sure they would like to take a big swing, but I don't think that swing is out there. Like, unless the Bucks completely, utterly, like, I'm talking about <laughs> tragically implode. The rest of the NBA not, is praying that that happens, by the way. Like, everyone is watching. They're moving off of Giannis Antetokounmpo. Like, mm -hmm. there are more than basketball considerations, especially for a small market. People don't understand. Like, Giannis is putting in the seats every night uh the idea that they're gonna trade this guy and move on from that financial windfall just to be in a hurry to start all over those don't align up with economic incentives right especially for a market the size of milwaukee's and so like Giannis isn't out there i don't think joel Embiid is out there uh i mean if they want to go out and get zach levine or if they want to go out and try to trade for Julius Randle, mm. or they want to Brandon Ingram, getting a Brandon Ingram sweepstakes, or they want to kick the tires on Zion Williamson, those are the kind of guys who are available at the moment. I don't think Embiid and Giannis, you know, legitimately franchise-altering, life-changing superstars, I don't think those guys are on the, on the available, and so they, they might just have to settle for some secondary star action. Yeah, the guys that are available are guys like D'Angelo Russell, right? It's yeah. not the guys like Giannis Have Antetokounmpo. At him. <laughs> yeah, right. We'll, we'll dangle certain carrots, but uh, we're not going to dangle our franchise guys. That's kind of how it works. Waz, you're the best. We appreciate you coming on the show, man. Where can we find all your amazing work? And they'll let you go enjoy the rest of your day. Anytime, bros uh, and sisses. Um, <laughs> I would say uh, just check out group chat on the Ringer NBA podcast feed. Uh, In my feelings on our YouTube and uh, Big Waz on every single social media platform. Yeah, go follow Waz. He's the best. We appreciate you coming on the show, man. All right, there you have it. Another edition of Through the Ringer. We appreciate Cousin Sal as always. And thanks to Big Waz for coming on the show. We appreciate you tuning in to Through the Ringer. And we will see you next week. <laughs>